So before we talk about periodic trends and explaining periodic trends, first we have to look at Coulomb's law. And first, Coulombic attraction is the attraction between the protons within the nucleus and the electrons that are outside the nucleus within the atom. And so this attraction occurs because your protons are positive, your electrons are negative, so you have that attraction. And Coulomb's law actually describes this attraction. And this is the formula for Coulomb's law. So F is force, so force equals K, which is a constant, times Q1, which is one of the charges, times Q2, which is another charge, over distance squared. So again, K is a constant. You'll always be given this constant. Q1, Q2 are charges over D squared, which is the distance between them. So according to this equation, the electrons that are close to the nucleus will be held with a greater force because your value of D is small. When you have a small value of D, your force is going to be large. So force and distance are inversely proportional. They're actually inversely proportional to the square of the distance. So electrons close to the nucleus are held tighter and then the higher positive charge, which is effective nuclear charge that we'll talk about later, will draw the electrons closer to the nucleus and actually hold them with a greater force. So the higher the positive charge you have, um, the stronger the force that is holding the electrons um, or pulling the electrons in toward the nucleus. So something else that we have to look at is valence electrons. So valence electrons are the same as your outer shell. So they're the electrons in the outermost shell. And these are the electrons that can participate in the formation of bonds. So whenever we have bonds forming, um, it is the valence electrons that are participating. Um, and again, it's electrons that are in the outermost S and P orbitals. So that's really important. It's outermost S and P. Okay, because if you think about it, D orbitals always have the S in the outermost energy level. So you can't have 3D as outermost because you also have the 4S. N equals 4 is greater than N equals 3. So valence electrons are the electrons that are in the outermost S and P orbitals. Um, and the number of valence electrons corresponds to the group number. So if you are in group one, okay, that are, those are the alkali metals, you have, a, you have one valence electron. Group two, the alkaline earth, is uh, two valence. Group three A, so you're going by the A, so three A, boron, aluminum, those have three valence electrons. Carbon's group has four, um, and then you can keep working through nitrogen has five, and so on. Um, but the transition and the rare earth elements are tricky um, because sometimes their highest level DNF electrons behave like valence, um, but other times they behave like shielding electrons. So this is why transition and rare earth elements always um, get a little weird. And then we have the shielding electrons. These are the same as the core electrons or the inner shell. So these are the electrons that are included in a noble gas core in the configuration. Um, they're between the nucleus and the valence electrons, um, and they're called the shielding electrons because they shield the valence electrons from the attractive force of the nucleus. So for an example, we have magnesium. And magnesium's electron configuration, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2. If we rewrite this as a noble gas configuration, it is neon, 3s2. So these electrons here represent a noble gas. These are the core electrons. So we just add these up. 2 plus 2 plus 6. Okay, we have 10 core electrons. Okay, so 10 core or 10 shielding electrons. All 10 of these electrons shield these 3s, shield the valence electrons from the nucleus. So those are just some terms that are going to help you looking at Coulomb's law, valence, and shielding electrons as we go through and start discussing periodic trends.